Hello, welcome to my review of Shonda Rhimes' Masterclass. I was trying to be dramatic, you know how they always like in all the Masterclass ads walking through a forest or through the library or like to the location and then they sit down at the end. I wonder how many times they had to film that. Hello, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be taking Shonda Rhimes Masterclass on how to write for television. Author JC Carpenter actually is the one who asked if I wanted to do this collaboration with her and I was like, heck yes. So I will leave JC's links down below if you want to check out her video on the topic. She has done several of these so I think she might have uh, a better insight into like what this masterclass did different. Um, I have done a couple of them over the past two years-ish. I took James Patterson's, N.K. Jemison's, Neil Gaiman's, and now Shonda Rhimes. I know that that's not a big sample size and I, at the risk of like fully giving away my thoughts on this, <laughs> there is a like five episode arc through this series about a case study that is easily the best lessons I have seen on Masterclass. It was the most helpful. Okay, I will I will stop raving so that I can give you a little bit more background. <laughs> but first a sip. Mm. So I was really excited that JC approached me with this collaboration because I have it as one of my goals to actually try writing a screenplay or a script or both this year. And I use this mug specifically because the concept I've had in mind is my Scooby-Doo meets Princess Bride story. This really silly idea that I've had that I think would make for a really fun mini-series. So anyways, this has all been in the back of my mind, but I am not someone who's ever really attempted in full writing a screenplay or script before. I'm not in that TV world. I come from a novel world uh, who like sometimes, really not as often as I'd like, dabbles in short stories. So this is an entirely new type of writing for me. If you look even just at how screenplays and scripts are written, it's it's visibly different, right? And then this concept of it in a lot of ways being a collaboration with a writer's room and you don't need to write anything more than just the pilot because you don't know if something's gonna get picked up and how much the actors can play into the character uh, as the series goes on. Showrunners, line producers, there's so many things that I didn't know even before this class. What I did know is how much I didn't know. <laughs> but I am a big fan of Shonda Rhimes. I have tried writing like Shonda Rhimes before. I have read her Year of Yes, which is one of my sort of favorite recent-ish self-help autobiography kind of things. I've enjoyed a lot of the shows that she is the like producer, showrunner on, um, and didn't realize until I was researching for this that Shonda Rhimes wrote the screenplay for The Princess Diaries 2, which as a child was on repeat. <laughs> I loved The Princess Diaries books and then so to have that second one. The first one was also on repeat, but like for different reasons. Anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's to say I'm a big Shonda Rhimes fan without actually being a huge like Grey's Anatomy scandal fan. And really, if I'm being honest, all this masterclass did was make me even more of a fan. So I want this video to be both a review or vlog of the masterclass experience, but also uh, as part of my journey, as a very purposeful part of the sort of learning absorption process of how to write a screenplay script when you have no idea what you're doing because that is me. And I do come away at the end with a very clear direction for where I am going to continue this journey and how I think it is definitely possible um, to, to have a screenplay script written that I'm proud of by the end of the year. So once again, I want to thank JC for reaching out to me. This had been on my list for a really long time to take this class and I'm excited for the push to actually do that again. Links down below. Please do check out her channel. And without further ado, Let's get into it. It's submitting. It's creating a document, however many pages long, depending on who you are. I did, I think, 12 of them, and I think they were like sort of two pages each for each one. I think we're handing those out to you guys, so you guys are going to get them. 
Okay, so this is one of my favorite things about Masterclass. I have pulled up her class guide. Um, also, I immediately looked up pilot scripts and there is a Google site that you can use to find. Anyways, um, more on that later, but this is 64 pages, okay? Then they also have all these different things you can download. So that was the class guide. And here we go. The story bibles that she was just talking about. So Grey's Anatomy, each about the doctors and then for the episodes. So this is the two pages or a page each almost that she was talking about. So I'm skipping to the last one that they have, One Dwell Broken. So if the theme is karma, I like that they have Christina's karma is worse than the others. So it's interesting to see how the theme goes in with the overall plot. Scrolling up theme, too much of a good thing, loss, risk. Oh, it is very cool to see how they play around with theme for each episode. Um, Shonda has this thing about knowing if what you're trying to write is specifically like procedural or is it serialized and even how you write TV being very specific to that thing and the research you need to do ahead of time. So the general advice to be a good writer, often novel writer, is to read a lot. Write a lot, read a lot. And so she reiterates this for TV writing, but for it to be watch a lot of TV, watch a lot of pilots, analyze the pilot. So watch a pilot, then find the pilot online, <laughs> read the pilot, then watch it and read it sort of simultaneously. Do that for both the good ones, but also for the bad ones so that you can really understand, understand what worked and what didn't. So for something like Grey's Anatomy, where it's very serialized, it's interesting now for me to think about how there's a theme for each episode. <laughs> I also liked in episode two how she talked about can your art meet that business? This is obviously true in so many creative elements that like we the writer are creating art first but ultimately when it gets into the consumer's hands it then that process of getting into consumer's hands is a business right? It is about making money and Chanda makes the point that if you can take it as a challenge be like what do the studio execs want? Um, like treat it that way. So you're kind of starting off on a base of what do they want? They, you, are, you get some parameters for your art, you know, so you can play within those parameters and then it's still kind of meeting that business need, which is an interesting way to look at it. Rather than creating the art first and kind of hoping it fits the business, you're just taking it a step and then doing it. It does look like it's gonna rain soon, so I think a walkie is in order. We shall. Beat the rain. So one of these things that I've found after doing enough of the master classes, but also the research for the various I tried writing like videos is the kind of, I don't even know what to call that feeling when there's this famous author that you look up to who kind of validates a part of your process, you know? Um, so much of learning is kind of challenging uh, ways that you've done things, but but there's those moments where you're just like, oh, I'm affirmed in this weird thing I do, or this way of writing or this way of researching or whatever. So Shonda Rhimes had this moment where she's talking about like, don't get hung up on titles or names. Like that all, not only can all that change, but what I found interesting that I did not know was, if you can read my handwriting, um, legal clearance on names is necessary. So coming from more of like a novel world, um, I guess I didn't realize that <laughs> there would need to be legal clearance. I'm sure if you're going to name your character like after a, f if you accidentally name them after a famous serial killer or something and it was supposed to be a rom-com, like a publisher would change that. But I think it's interesting that there's this extra level within TV that they have to do an entire legal clearance. So just cool for me to know these things that you don't learn. So it was simultaneously affirming, but also like there was an extra reason behind it specifically within the TV world. I also paused at this moment that I really loved on the researching your story lesson, which of all the ones so far is, but I didn't get the most out of necessarily. Though I did like how she talks about medical, medical, political, political stuff that they just like bracket within the script you can see because the story that they're telling is the story of the characters, not the story of the medicine, right? So like that can come later. I love this bit about when you've done enough research, I guess. There comes a moment when you realize if I don't write this down, I'm gonna lose it or I'm gonna get bored or I'm gonna lose my mind or I can't take it anymore. So that's when you should start to write. 
And the thing to remember is that you still have the right to go back and do more research. Nothing has to be perfect. I think a lot of people are stopped by the idea of perfection. Like, I must know this or I'm... Okay. I think this is such an excellent point since I think all of the creative process, there's lots of moments where you can get hung up within the stage of I haven't made this perfect enough. I haven't made this line perfect enough. This chapter still needs tons of work. As someone who does my research usually after the zero draft or like the bigger outline and do waves of research, I hadn't even thought about how easy it would be to get hung up in the research stage as well. So that was just kind of like a light bulb moment for me for some people's process. Frankly, I wish I did research earlier on. So this might be the push that I need to do at least a little bit more. Um, I like the point about when it clicks. We talk about refilling your creative well a lot, but like once it is full, that's that like I must right now or I'm gonna go crazy feeling. And I love the idea of maybe directly after the zero draft or like maybe something there, I just fill that well as high as I can, wait until it's like I'm going to explode <laughs> and then just do it all, just right. So anyways, yes, very interesting. Okay, let us move on to the next one. developing your characters to really know what they want and what they need, which is, you know, what they want is what they think they want and what they need is, well, what you think they should have. It's interesting, like how you know what those things are really have to do with what story you're telling and how you know what story you're telling has to do with what those things are. So it's sort of a chicken and the egg process. <laughs> but when you okay, so. <laughs> I really enjoyed her bit about ensemble characters. If you're following along with the PDF, they have different assignments after each lesson, which I'm not quite doing, though I do think would be a good way to build all of this stuff out. But of course, I do have a story in mind. Um, I have been wanting to write, I have this idea for a TV show and I have this idea for a movie. So I'm focusing on TV here and it would be an ensemble cast. And so I like the points that she makes about purposely having kind of one character being the voice of dissent against the main character if you do have a main character amongst the main characters and then having one character that you sort of just we the audience can trust as this is the truth. So when I'm personally thinking about the shows that I've watched that have had ensemble characters that I've really enjoyed I do think that they all have a version of that dynamic right? So anyways uh this story that I want to write this TV show script, this pilot, um, was initially a book idea I had ages ago that I joked about being Scooby-Doo meets Princess Bride. And initially when I tried to write it, I had seven characters. And what I found was during Camp NaNoWriMo when I was writing it, when I was drafting it, I just could not nail the voice of all seven characters. <laughs> because it's a lot of characters. So this is one of those things where I've thought a lot about like, do I need there to be seven? Could there be five main characters? So I think this is something I'm going to kind of play around with if I have assigned one as kind of the main character, um, what the other dynamics are going to play out with. Uh, having the voice of dissent and then having this almost voice of truth, at least for the audience. And then I'll go back and kind of assign dynamics from the other characters uh, just to see if they're actually needed because one of those things is that we as writers or when we're conceptualizing it we might really fall in love with the idea of the character and then it not actually be you know it might not actually pan out once you start writing like they might not actually be needed i have done a story before where i've basically merged two characters together and i always use this example but i was at a book convention and marie lou was talking about how she had a character and then she just turned that character into a skateboard because that's basically the purpose that the character ended up serving <laughs> earlier in the draft anyway so lots of thoughts to be given about these ensemble characters and then i paused at the perfect moment one because i'm trying to get better at pitching but also the opening here made me giggle. So a pitch, for those of you who don't know, and why should you know? Because they're the worst. They're the worst. <laughs> and now we begin writing the script. And the next several 
are about structure, process, effective habits, the pilot, and writing authentic dialogue, and then we're on to case studies, editing, beyond the pilot, writing the series, more case studies, and then kind of about the industry and what that looks like. So I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but as someone who comes from more novel writing-esque things, um, getting used to the script structure uh, was a change. I once upon a time did a writing experiment with my good friend, uh, Jessica Williamson, based off of, in part, or inspired by our good friend, Becca C. Smith, who writes a lot of screenplays, or in fact uses the kind of screenplay method where she'd come from in the writing world to like move into her novels. She writes it as a screenplay first and then kind of novelizes it sometimes. So just getting used to that format was a change. One that I had not read up enough, studied enough, before attempting to write one before. So I'm excited having read a little bit more. I have a kind of how-to book to read, Foundations, that Beck had recommended. I also beta read a screenplay for her. So I'm just, I'm getting more used to how to read it. I don't know that that means I'm comfortable enough yet to write one, but again, I'm taking it all in, I'm absorbing it. This is kind of this first step. So I'm excited to sort of continue this lesson here. You want to have something um, happen that turns the story, uh, meaning that the story should then sort of head in a new direction each time you hit the end of an act. In act one of your story, you really need to introduce your characters um, in an exciting way and set up your world in an exciting way. It should be visual. Okay, this might be one of my favorite lessons so far, um, or in a while. It was basically her talking about how the kind of failures that led up to the ultimate pilot of Scandal. I'd actually made a note that I hadn't talked about yet, <laughs> but like several lessons ago um, about the kind of incubation period that Scandal needed. So she wrote the pilot episode in four days, but this was after a year of it sort of marinating in her brain for a bit. She'd met with the person that Scandal's like, uh, loosely based on. It's not really based on, but she she chatted with her, right? And she said that, you know, she needed all that time to think, but, you know, lessons later we learned that she had actually attempted to write that pilot before the final one that she got done in four days. They were just sort of failures is in quotes here, okay? Um, so she's going through and explaining the like two versions of the pilot that she tried to write and the reasons that they didn't work. Um, so one of them was like, it just didn't fit the vibe of the network. Like it felt too childish almost. The other one is kind of giving away too much about the character too soon and not letting uh, this ambiguity play out. I just, it's it's these kind of things that I love, um, which also leads me to believe, because this is technically called a uh, case study, the opening scenes of Scandal. So I'm really looking forward to the case studies that we're going to have later. Uh, I showed that there was like, you know, five or six lessons that are just completely the case study. And she does include in her master class, if you go to the class guides and stuff, there are the original pitch, the early drafts, alternative scenes, and the pilots, and the final draft. Um, so I think that's going to be a big part of these case studies. We also get a, what looks like maybe a change of location. <laughs> Anyways, very, very excited about that. So quick walkie break, refill my coffee, and then we're gonna get back to it. And we have a location change. <laughs> Let us start the first case study. <laughs> so, act one, you have your deciding incident, you've introduced your characters, you've got your plot going, things are interesting. Act two, I always say. Okay. I figured that before I moved on to act two or this part of what she's talking about, I would go ahead and read act one. And I am, I don't want to say so impressed. Obviously there's a reason this script got picked up. It's really good. And I think reading it now helps to reinforce what she was talking about earlier with basically having the worst case scenario. So all of it is set up, but also making it worse and worse for the characters, which is really fun. There are a couple things that I'm not totally sure I understand, like the omitted and these moved bits, but the rest I can follow really easily. I'm currently assuming that omitted is just like 
removed from like what was ultimately shown on screen. But I don't really know. That might be something I'm gonna Google later, but currently on page 11 of my read through, I have a couple of more to go before I make it to act two, but let us continue. I do think it's interesting, the uh, underlining being the novel version of italics. <laughs> Don't do me any favors. Christina. You know what? You did a cutthroat thing. Deal with it. Mm. Don't come to me for absolution. You want to be a shark? Be a shark. I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Only makes you. Okay. Yes. Reading and watching at the same time. I'm, this is what I'm going to spend just like a week doing. Is <laughs> getting as many pilot episodes as I can and watching the pilots um, for both the ones I loved and hated. But I do need to pause real quick because I don't really understand the purpose of these random people with Shonda in this scene. Like they're just kind of nodding emphatically. And I guess like they're doing the same thing I am. Like they have journals and paper that they're like occasionally writing with and like, you know, a coffee and a water, but I just don't fully understand what's going on here. None of them have actually spoken. Um, listen, they're just gonna laugh here. I think that the what? idea really <laughs> I do like how Shonda is basically talked multiple times about staying on top of the industry in a lot of ways. Just like know where you fit or what you are aiming for. So it's very similar to the know the rules in order to break the rules, but like know what's going on. She talked earlier about something that I really loved. Where we're at as a world and kind of the social climate um, will allow you to decide sort of what tone you might want, or at least this is how she takes it. You know, if the world is very dark and pessimistic, this is the time that people are turning toward optimism um, and vice versa. So I think that's a great point. And I think it's interesting in this <laughs> section too, talking about how she reveals a big secret at the end of the pilot episode about Meredith Grey's character and her mom. Um, and she thinks that revealing a secret is a little bit overdone now. She talked earlier about Lost was her example and how that was originally written to kill off a character in the pilot episode, which she said that they ended up not doing because back then you couldn't do that, but she thinks you could get away with that kind of thing now, killing a main character off in the pilot episode and just being done with it. So I just, there's lots of things that I think are really interesting that I had not internalized before as someone outside of that industry. Um, so yeah, just very, very cool stuff. <laughs> oh shit, this dude just started talking. The mom reveal, uh, Derek picking narrative to work with them. Okay, so I guess there is a point to that. <laughs> oh my God. I take back everything I said about the random audience. Look this. Pilot of Grey's Anatomy that there were several ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I think this sort of five lesson breakdown of this pilot episode is one of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't want to be over dramatic, but it is so incredibly helpful. However, whoever's genius idea was to set this masterclass up like this, because you have Shonda Rhimes literally breaking down everything, but then you also have these four people who are like asking questions. Holy shit. <laughs> I did, I was just texting with my friend and I, uh, convinced her to watch this with me. So tonight I'm gonna have the script pulled up and watch it like in real time, not with the commentary. And I think this is one of those things that I'd like to go back and revisit because I feel like she's dropping like so many nuggets of wisdom. And oh, maybe even like after trying my hand at the script, I'll come back and see. Cause she's talking about like little character facets and why she put something in act one versus act four and like, Anyways, very cool. Sean arrives as my hero. Okay. <laughs> and frankly, I can't wait to see the television you produce because I look forward to watching it. Have fun. All right, I've reached the end of the class and I want to include one final clip of Shonda. It's the idea that you need to make peace with that reality. Like you can decide that you're not gonna write every day and there is nothing wrong with not writing every day, but then don't run around and call yourself an aspiring writer. Because if you really wanted to be a writer, 
that is what you would be doing. I thought this was so interesting and she did spend leading up to that quote um, time talking about how you can steal 10 minutes anywhere in your day. That is really all you need to commit to to write every day, steal 10 minutes. But I think it's she's commenting more on the desire, the, the need and the, the want to write every day, to get something out, to create something. And I thought that was a really nice perspective uh, on this, what often can feel like a debate on if you should or should not write every day. So maybe it'll be more motivational. Finally, I did want to show you how many notes I took. You belong in any room you enter. So that if that's one, Two, I started doing this with them and then just left it up to the case study. Uh, three, four, five, six. Basically, I have all these things still pulled up that I'm excited to reread and at the very end, she talks about why you should return to this class after you've finished writing your script, when you need any kind of boost of inspiration, all these things. And I think that's really true in this case. Um, other ones I've, you know, I'd like to return to just because it's nice to feel like you're sitting in an atmosphere and have this famous writer teaching you and that's nice but this one I think I'll actually actually return to because I think at every stage of the process she dropped a lot of things and because I'm not yet at that stage I could not absorb everything as much as I would like to so I am going to return after I finish writing my script <laughs> my pilot script <laughs> and so I just want to do some wrap-up thoughts and like last little bits of things I gleaned like episode two is episode one all over again kind of blew my mind like I the point of saying it that way is don't do anything different you're kind of building trust in the audience so if it's a procedural with this person as the main character in this do that exact same thing for episode two and I just like she talks a lot about planting and payoff which I really appreciated when I took Brandon Sanderson's class um his whole lecture on that and she broke down what a showrunner is and how not every writer will necessarily want to be a showrunner but if you want to be able to control the story you do want to be the showrunner so anyways it's just these interesting things as someone not in the tv world who's learning about that one of the things I appreciated most and I think kind of highlights the kind of empathy and knowledge Shonda brought to this class is she was talking about how she had gone to film school but she doesn't necessarily recommend that for people now because um it is so much more expensive now you have to take on a lot more debt potentially in order to go um and she thinks that it would be better to come out and, and start working, get a job in the industry and write at night kind of thing. And I, one of the things I so appreciate is when people who are giving advice are able to say, this worked for me at this time because of all of these reasons that really aren't applicable today. And I think her ability to kind of point that out and lead you toward what she think would work now is so helpful. Um, and yeah, there's just so many things I got out of this. Um, I think again, because I, I feel very much like a novice in this one, <laughs> learning about like what line producers are, how many days you have to write a script for each, like, and that time period, every single iteration for however many episodes you have that season and how, like, if they don't have a script, like everything's halted. You can't, the writers cannot be the one to halt it, right? <laughs> it's just, it's just these things, okay? Okay, so I am so excited. I think the next step for me in my personal journey through this with Shonda Rhimes having guided me in that direction is I am going to revisit those pilot scripts. I'm going to do Scandal and Grey's Anatomy, but I'm also going to find some of the ones that I really loved, some of the ones that didn't work for me, and maybe kind of figure out with the use of the script up if I can pinpoint why that was. So it's not just what worked and didn't but also maybe what didn't work for my personal taste as well and I'm going to I'm going to start the the read a lot watch a lot portion of this journey for me this year in trying to write a script and I am excited to forcibly take you along the journey with me. <laughs> Please do comment down below let me know if you like any of Shonda Rhimes shows let me know in particular if you could pinpoint why you like them so much. Let me know if you've ever thought about writing a script or a screenplay and also if you like TV or movies better. I am just curious. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye!